Call to order the President and Board of Trustees. <coughs> Roll call, please. <coughs> Trustee Rasich. Trustee Wajowski. Here. Trustee Benucci. Here. Trustee Lamb. Here. Trustee O'Rourke. Here. Trustee Peck. Here. Mayor Collins. Here. If we could rise for the pledge. Presidential comments? Uh, I just have a, a proclamation to read. Uh, the United States of America Vietnam War Memor uh, commemoration gives us an opportunity for all Americans to recognize, honor, and thank our Vietnam veterans and their families for their service and sacrifices during the Vietnam War, November 1st, 1955 to May 15th, 1975. And whereas more than 9,000 organizations across America have joined with the Department of Defense as a commemorative partners to honor our nation's Vietnam veterans, included the Dear Vietnam Vet Organization. And this commendation includes 9 million Americans, approximately 7 million living today, who served in the armed forces during this period and makes no distinction between those who served in country, in theater, or who were stationed elsewhere during those 20 years. I'll answer the call of duty and whereas Veterans Affairs Secretary Robert A. McDonald has designated March 29th, 2016. March 29th is the last day U.S. troops were on the ground in Vietnam as a day to honor those who have borne the battle and to extend gratitude and appreciation to them and their families now. Therefore, I, Michael P. Collins, President, Village of Plainfield, do hereby proclaim March 29th, 2016 as Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans Day. Do we have someone from the... Okay, I'll just add a personal note. This is very long overdue. Uh, there's 58,000 people that didn't return from that war, and uh, I'm glad we did it. That's all I have. Trustees' comments? I'd like to follow that just quickly. It's the first time I realized I was a Vietnam veteran. I served from 58 to 61. Uh, the act, real activity in Vietnam occurred a little bit after that, but I now discover I'm included. So I think it's a good idea to recognize that, as I've said a number of times over the years, uh, it was a very bad time for people in the service. They all got beat on pretty badly, and uh, they didn't deserve it. So I'm glad to see that we're trying to recognize it and give credit. Uh, not quite sure as much credit's due to me, but ah, I'm in there, so I'll take it. I believe this is a very important proclamation. I want to thank the mayor for bringing this forward, um, and as well thank Trustee Lamb. I believe Mayor Collins, you're also a veteran, correct? Thank you for your service. I do have several uh, family members and friends that uh, have served um, active duty um, and um, seen some pretty horrible things, some in the Vietnam War. Um, those memories have um, taken a toll on those individuals that have put their lives in danger to protect our country and our freedom. Um, I myself wanted to follow in the footsteps of uh, some of my family members. I did join the Air Force when I was 18 and was uh, injured uh, shortly in the basic training and uh, went home and went back to college. But once again, uh, my gratitude and my I just absolutely thank everyone that has put their lives in danger to protect our freedom and protect our democracy as it is. Thank you. I'll add to that. I was a child watching um, Vietnam War on TV, and that's really confusing for anyone, and a child, during, especially there, during those days when the kind of violence wasn't on any TVs, because I guess I'm kind of old. But um, actually, it was um, a very terrible time, and it was a time of questioning a lot of things. And these veterans deserve this, and I try to recognize them as much as I can on Veterans Day. I have a few friends that truly saw action, and the one thing all those people have in common is they will never talk about it. So um, I, my heartfelt, uh, you know, gratitude to all of them and to everyone who serves, and a thank you, especially for the people that have that when they came home, didn't receive um, any accolades or any thank yous or any anything. They they were treated very badly. So thank you for that proclamation, Mayor. 
trusty Bonucci's right. They, they a lot of them were treated badly, and still to this day, at the VA, there are problems. Um, my uncle and father both were in Vietnam. My uncle just recently passed away, and he was going to the VA, and his level of care was substandard. Um, and it's unfortunate because a lot of them don't have the money to pay for private hospitals, so they're forced into a system that doesn't necessarily treat them with the best of intentions. Thank you, Mayor, for honoring these, uh, these veterans and uh, their service to our country. I guess I'll just add that I'm always grateful uh, to those who serve to protect us and appreciate that all, all they do, not only the Vietnam veterans, but all of our veterans and our first line responders as well. Thank you. Are there any other trustee comments? I just had a, a, a comment or a question, maybe more towards uh, Administrator Murphy. It's our strategic plan community meeting is coming up. I didn't know if it's not too early to start talking about that so people listening could maybe put that on their agendas. Yes, sir. It's never too early to start talking about it, and thank you for uh, the reminder to start getting the word out. I know uh, Mrs. Deboni has a number of things planned to go out, actually starting this week, so your timing's uh, perfect. Uh, our first, uh, well, our uh, first time we had our community event was about three years ago. It was a wonderful turnout. We had about 60 residents uh, come on out and offer their input. Um, and so the board um, had a, uh, a number of conversations over the last three years as it related to those goals and objectives that were set, as you all know. I'm saying this more for the folks watching on television than for the board here. Um, and there have been great strides that have been made. Um, the board it, it has asked if we would uh, please have another community event. So we have scheduled that event, event for May the 4th. Uh, that is a uh, Wednesday. Uh, we will meet over at uh, Plainfield Central High School this time. Sorry, Plainfield High School Central Campus. So I don't get yelled at later on by uh, Mrs. Benucci. Um, and uh, we kick off at 6 o'clock. Oh, 7 o'clock. That's right. I have to arrive at 6 to get everything set up. So 7 o'clock is when we have uh, things kicking off. And um, it, uh, it will be a very worthwhile event. We're looking forward to having a great turnout again this time. Uh, Dr. Lou Bender, who was the uh, facilitator that helped us through, has uh, graciously agreed to uh, team up with us again for this community event, and um, we're hoping that to have another uh, great turnout and great suggestions and great guidance from the community. Are there any other trustee comments? If not, this will be the time for public comments. There are no public comments, and we'll proceed with the business meeting. We're seeking a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the agenda. Trustee Wajowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Peck? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. We're seeking a motion to approve the consent agenda to include minutes of the board meeting held on March 7th, bills paid and bills payable reports for March 21st, Cash and investments, revenue and expenditure reports for February. Motion's been made and seconded to approve items A through C under the consent agenda. Trustee Wajowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Peck? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Next item on the agenda is Will Kankakee Regional Development Authority. We're seeking board consideration of a motion to adopt ordinance number 3250 authorizing the seating of private activity bonding authority to Will Kankakee Regional Development Authority. So move. Second. That motion's been made and seconded. Are there any comments, questions on this item? We do have uh, Andrew Hamilton from uh, Will Kankakee RDA here to uh, answer any questions or explain a little bit about uh, what we do with our uh, volume cap if if you do have questions likewise uh, mrs. Pleckham is uh, is always very well adept at answering any questions I can give a brief background uh, if the board likes every year the village receives an um, authorization or an allocation for volume cap what is called volume cap from the state of Illinois and it's not dollars per se, it's authority to issue uh, tax exempt private activity bonds for certain qualifying low income and industrial development projects. Um, this year, the Village Board's volume cap is just over 4 million, 4.2 million. 
And if it's not allocated before May 1st, um, it goes back to the governor's office for reallocation to projects around the state. If you see in your packet, um, one of the most recent brochures from the Will Kankakee Regional Development Authority, the village was um, successful in utilizing um, and additional funds in addition to what we get allocated as a village to the Plainfield Supportive Living um, Development back in 2010. Um, they were able to issue $12.2 million um, in bonds where our allocation was probably just under $4 million at that point, uh, if I had to look back at that. So what happens is that it pulls these allocations into a regional development uh, where it can be helped either in Plainfield or within our region to help support jobs and um, to stimulate the economy. And this has been passed uh, consistent with the past few years that the village has gone in this direction. And I know Andrew's here to answer any other questions, but I figured I'd give a little background uh, prior to Andrew having to speak or answer any questions the board might have. It's worked well in the past. I highly recommend we continue it. Uh, I'd rather see it spent in our region than send it back to the state. So by all means, let's uh, <laughs> vote again to support this. There are no other comments or questions. The motion was made and seconded by the board to adopt ordinance number 3250, authorizing the seating of private activity bonding authorized Activity Bonding Authority to the Will Kankakee Regional Development Authority. Trustee Wojowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Peck? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Next item on the agenda is 2016 2017 fiscal year budget public hearing. We're seeking a motion to open a public hearing for on the 2016 2017 fiscal year budget. I move um, that we open the public hearing on the 2016-17 fiscal year budget. Second. That motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. That motion carries. Uh, provide a little background for the budget this year. Fiscal year 17 budget uh, process began back in October, actually very late September of 2015, uh, with a series of public workshops. Uh, each workshop includes specific overviews of each department and division uh, and fund along with detailed discussions amongst the board of the proposed budget and, and planned areas of, um, of focus for this current upcoming fiscal year. Uh, what you have in your packet is a balanced budget totaling $52.9 million including uh, $23.5 million in general fund operations, $15.8 million in water and sewer operations, Eight and a half million in road, roadway and capital improvements across the budget. Um, based on board direction and consistent with the village's strategic planning initiatives, there are three new positions being proposed in this budget, including two police officers and an economic development specialist. Uh, no new taxes are included in this year's budget. In addition, the property tax rates are remaining the same as the previous year's levy. The budget has been available for public inspection at Village Hall and online, uh, and the public hearing was noticed in newspapers with accordance with state statutes. This is a public hearing. Are there any public comments? If there are no public comments, then we're seeking a motion to close the public hearing and return to the regular business meeting. Move we close the public hearing and return to the agenda. Second. That motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. That motion carries. Are there any other comments or questions? Regarding the budget? I, I guess I have some comments, yes. Um, from my perspective, today is a very important day for our village. It's a day we vote to approve the proposed budget for next fiscal year. I guess it's important to me because it's for the coming year and how we plan to spend the village revenue. First, I would like to begin by thanking staff for their continued hard work throughout the budget process that started back in September with the five-year capital plan. Uh, Mary Kay Ash, founder of Mary Kay Cosmetics, once said, everybody wants to be appreciated, so if you appreciate somebody, don't keep it a secret. Well, I just want to say that I appreciate all the village employees and all that they do every day to help make this great village where people desire to live and raise their families. Thank you all. You are appreciated, including, <laughs> including all of us, <laughs> yes, including everyone. I have learned a lot going through the first budget process as one of the two newly elected trustees. I plan to utilize those learnings to add more value into meaningful dialogue, specifically as it relates to cost savings and increasing our tax base so as in the past we can continue to work to reduce our property tax rate for homeowners. 
I believe that without raising taxes, we need to focus on ways to reduce to reduce our horrible our traffic congestion. We have some great capital improvement projects in our plan. However, most are repair and replacement projects. They do not necessarily address the residents' top concern of reducing traffic congestion. I believe with the help of this board, the help of our experienced staff, and the input from our residents, we can and will find ways to help alleviate some of the congestion. As with the new budget for a new year, I am hopeful that the next year will provide me the chance to take advantage of the opportunities to create positive contributions towards improving the quality of life in Plainfield. Very well spoken, sir. You're one. <laughs> Are there any other comments or questions? I would just like to say that uh, to note, thank you to the staff and the, um, to note to the general public, the village portion of your tax bill has not been increased by the passage of this budget. I think that's important. It's a tradition of this board, and I hope, at least for the rest of my term, I'll be voting for the same. Are there any other comments or questions? Now we're seeking board consideration of a motion to adopt ordinance number 3251, adopting the annual budget for the Village of Plainfield for the 2016-2017 fiscal year. So move. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Trustee Wojcicki. Yes. Trustee Panucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Peck? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Next item on the agenda is at your door, household hazardous waste collection agreement. We're seeking board consideration of a motion to authorize the village president to execute a contract with WM Curbside LLC regarding household hazardous waste collection. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Are there any comments or questions on this item? The planning department, uh, Brian, or who should I address my question? No, actually, um, you can ask uh, 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 Mrs. Devoney or myself or uh, Mrs. Pleckham, depending on what the question could be. We also do have Mike Morley here from Waste Management to answer uh, questions as well. My first one, and the reason why I asked this one through planning, a lot of times planning um, does a lot of our surveys and whatnot when we, right. that's where I went in that direction. Amy, I apologize if I <laughs> jumped, uh, jumped your department on that. Um, but I guess my question is, um, the memo says that um, residents were um, surveyed um, and that there was a good response. About 90% of the residents who took the survey were favorable to this proposal. Um, I guess I'd like to know how many residents w were surveyed. Do you have an enough? A quantity. We had 974 residents take the survey. And how were those 90 the, those residents targeted? Were they was it completely random throughout the village, or was it focused in a particular area? Online survey, so we advertised it through our website, through our e-news, through our utility billing, through social media. Um, we kind of blanketed how we advertised it throughout the community. And then what we did to answer the question that you're getting at is we did ask them to answer what subdivision they were in so that we could see that it was blended across the entire uh, community. And uh, we had responses from uh, every uh, part of town. Are there other vendors other than waste management that provide this service that we're aware of in this, in this community? At this point, we were working uh, directly with waste management. They're our current uh, provider for our waste collection services. Uh, we tied this to tie in with the timeline on our existing contract. So it is a value add to our existing contract. It is a separate and standalone agreement. However, it will uh, sunset at the same time as our current contract with waste management expires. I guess I was really my curiosity is, and this probably is the least expensive measure to offer the service to residents by going with our, our current provider. Um, I'm going to support this tonight, but I do actually, when the entire contract does come up, I do absolutely want to see what other vendors are available in our community that, that can provide um, all of our waste services and make sure that our residents are getting the best price possible and the best service possible and that we don't exclude anyone from a formal RFP process and that we advertise this publicly. Um, I will not support having this not go out for a bid in the future when the entire contract's up for renewal. 
we 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 agree that when the full contract is up the, the it makes perfect sense that this would be all uh, within there as well i do want to add that the way we wrote this contract does have uh, a mutual agreement that uh, we can uh, terminate early if we're finding that there is that um, humbly this is a relatively new world uh, picking up this type of materials um, uh, it used to be that the county actually provided these services. We had a couple of different uh, uh, options that were available. Those have all essentially dried up. And so our residents are finding that they can't get rid of the, the household hazardous waste and the electronics waste. So we stepped up and uh, started having these conversations. We're actually the very first community in Will County to set up this program and we're very uh, very proud of ourselves for being the very first one to recognize that this was an issue. Reach out to our residents, make sure they liked the idea, and that we were going down the right path as far as our residents were concerned, and uh, feel it is a responsive and responsible approach. But you're absolutely right. Uh, when the proposal, w when the current contract comes up and we go out for our RFP process again, we certainly will plan to have uh, this included. Um, if indeed that is a service that our residents want at that time. If we find out that, you know, the, the state of the world changes again, and it very well likely will, that this isn't a value-added service anymore, or maybe it becomes that we need to do even more, we'll, we'll certainly make sure that our contracts are written that way when we go out for bid. I am see electronic devices sitting on a curb after garbage is picked up for days upon days upon days. Um, so I, I do think this would be a, a solution to help solve that, that problem. And um, are there going to be metrics available from waste management on how many residents actually do utilize this service so we actually have that data then to go uh, back and... Yeah, M Mike can speak to what that is, but uh, the quick answer is yes. Excellent. Thank you. I'd also like to add that Will County is abandoning a lot of their programs for picking up this waste. And also, when <coughs> we had Vintage Tech in town, at first they would pick up at your door for nothing. Then they went to a $25 fee for a pickup. Now they're, now they're at $75 for a pickup. So uh, $1 and, uh, what, 15 cents is, hard, is way less than $75 per. That's per pickup. So if you have two in a month, that's a buck and a half. This is quite the deal for a dollar and fifteen cents. I agree, Mayor. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, this um, we've been talking to staff for, for some time on on this particular process. The and, and to uh, echo what the uh, Brian had indicated, the the county had the best program in the state, um, and because of just changes in commodities prices, uh, it, it's really uh, changed and changed very quickly so where you went from free pickup 13 drop-off facilities to today there's there's really no outlet for this material so uh, <clears throat> you know at your door special collection is uh, is going to address the electronics issue but it's also going to address a household hazardous waste um, you don't have to wait for the county to kind of bring its program around or, or wait uh, residents will uh, will have access uh, to disposal um, really within um, uh, about a week or so after they call I think I think it's a great program I think we're kidding ourselves if we don't think people are generating this waste and just putting it in a dark colored bag and sticking it at the bottom of the garbage can I'm, so I think ultimately this will help get it disposed of properly at what I would see as a fairly minor cost so I think it's a good program um, I just have a couple questions, and I don't know if it would be towards yourself or towards Mr. Harvey, but it was brought up, again, that, that this is mutually cancelable, and I don't know that that's true, is it? Is it? Or is it for the initial term of for the four years? Um, I believe that if th that we, we made um, adjustments to the agreement so that if something wasn't working, if there was some sort of a cost change, or the village found that uh, there, there was some sort of regulatory change um, that the the agreement could be uh, canceled. Right, but we can't just cancel it if we decide to cancel, unless there's kind of cause, correct? Um, 
one of those the, items you just described, basically. Right. I mean, it, you know, a, 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 I think I think the, the the what we were looking at was a, a change in law. If if there was a, a, a serious change in the law, um, <clears throat> where, you know, the, these these items were, you know allowed again I, I don't think oh and that's and that's fine I just want to make sure we understand what we're what we're approving that's all so the initial term is for the four years correct correct and our current other waste management contract with you expires when December 31st of uh, 2020 2020 okay um, the only concern that I have Brian and maybe it's mr. Harvey is the second sentence or the terms of the agreement therefore the Thereafter, the parties may mutually agree to extend the agreement through December 31st, 2028. So I don't know. I know it says mutually agree, but, I mean, you can always amend the contract. I don't know why we have to have that specific sentence in there. It kind of creates a little what I would describe as maybe confusion in that maybe the contract is intended to be extended. Well, it, the current contract is uh, with waste management that we have for waste collection also has the ability to extend it. Uh, after it expires as it currently stands. So that's why that language ties in with that. But you're right, Trustee O'Rourke. I mean, it's a situation where it still takes board action. You know, you have to affirmatively do something. Um, it doesn't mean you're mandated to just because it's in there. And also, in follow up on your uh, earlier question, I think you're talking about paragraph 11 termination. Is that what you were? Uh, talking about yeah I, I think the comment was made just real early in the conversation that we could mutually terminate if, if something were to happen or we didn't like it or something you know so we're not really committed long term but if I read it correctly I think we're committed at least for the four years unless a change in law or something more specifically than us just not liking the program anymore is that correct I mean 11 talks about if there's a breach either side has a reasonable chance to cure I mean frankly uh, we provide uh, our basic duty is to pay they're the ones with really you know a series of obligations but like any basic contract you give uh, a party some time to cure that's that's standard because you don't want to rush off to to litigate it so that's a that's a pretty standard um, provision um, but it does provide you know that there has to be some cause it's we can't just cancel during those first four years just because we decide we don't like the program. And, and I'm sorry if I, I didn't mean no, it to sound okay. that way. I just way. want to make I, sure I we understand what, what's here, that's all. And, and if you're, then just to confirm, so that second sentence, so basically we're just committing tonight for the first four years. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Harvey, on the, on the renewal of this contract, this one expires in 2020. Will this be brought back before the board again in 2020 to either decide to renew the contract or to abandon the contract at that time? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're the only parties that can make that determination so, I mean you are the village I mean when you're sitting here with six other people so it's a village board decision to terminate or to extend okay thank you based on trustee or works comments earlier uh, it might pay to give credit to waste management for providing excellent service for the last 10 years I believe ever since I've been on the board you've been doing it we've had to my knowledge no complaints uh, the service has gotten better and better you pick up virtually everything that's at the curbs now. So, uh, yeah, we'll go out and get a competitive bid when this terminates, but uh, you put yourself in an awfully good position by providing outstanding service over the years. And I, I have more background for, for remembering that than perhaps some of the newer one, trustees. Uh, one question on the billing, though. How is it going to show up on the uh, garbage bill? Uh, the, uh, it will be line item or not it won't be a separate line item it'll be part of the garbage bill okay then my question comes up and Amy may want to respond to it how are we going to notify the residents to call waste management when they want to pick up they're going to need the phone number some were readily accessible and I would think if we had a separate line item on the bill that might be a perfect place to put if you want to pick up call this number we're going to do a variety of things. We're going to reach out through our e-news, through our website, through our social media. We're also going to be doing a special mailing with waste management, and we also will be incorporating into our waste management brochure that's available online and that we also hand out to new residents. And then our front desk receives numerous calls for both household hazardous waste and electronics, so they, of course, will have the information as well. So we'll be reaching out you know, in our usual methods, but also doing a special mailer just to introduce the program to everyone. Part, I'm sorry, just for clear, is part of that, will every homeowner get one of those bags to dispose of the products, or 
the the actual mailer which I left at the front table, which has the bag in it, that's the kit they send out when you call for service. Oh, okay. Um, so what we'll do is we'll send a mailing out with an, you know directions <coughs> on how to do that and the number to call, et cetera. There will also be opportunity in, on the bill itself to have text included where the number can be put in a month-to-month -month basis. So not only are we going to get all the mailers out originally, but for each month, you've probably seen it, we've added comments and things on the top of the bill where it talks about um, yard waste pickup, things of that nature. We'll, we'll be able to include that phone number so it's not lost. Yeah, I would highly recommend that because people, when you, when you want it, you have to find out where to go. Not everybody is familiar with all the systems as we are so it's on the bill they see it uh, I'm sure if they get it on a monthly basis they will pick it up and actually take advantage of the service which is a fabulous service so I think if we make it easy for them to do it because the responsibility is them that's while well, the responsibility is ours actually but it's our job to make sure the residents implement it properly so uh, whatever we can do to help them I think would be appreciated Are there any other comments or questions? Not the motion was made and seconded to authorize the village president to execute a contract with WM Curbside LLC regarding household hazardous waste collection. Trustee Wojcicki? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Peck? Thank you. That motion carries. Next item on the agenda is Playa Vista. We're seeking board consideration of a motion to direct the village attorney to draft an ordinance approving the amendment to the annexation agreement for the property known as Grand Park, neighborhoods four, five, and six. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, if I may, <coughs> just briefly, uh, I know the board will recall this case was considered uh, at the March 7th meeting. Uh, we conducted the public hearing for the uh, uh, proposed amendment to the annexation agreement, and uh, there was some discussion on the part of the board and the uh, developer. Uh, address those questions. Uh, we provided some additional information in the staff report that was attached to uh, to the uh, or included in the packet this evening. Uh, what staff is requesting uh, this evening, uh, if should the board be so inclined, is direction to prepare the um, ordinances uh, for consideration of the amendment to the annexation agreement and for the major change to the plan development. There are two other items on the agenda, uh, that being approval of a preliminary plat and a final plat. Uh, at this time, staff is requesting that we continue to hold those items over, uh, not consider those this evening, and uh, review those concurrently with uh, the board's consideration of the ordinances for the amendment to the annexation agreement and the major change to the plan development. Uh, the reason for this approach, as requested by staff, is, uh, as was the case uh, on March 7th, uh, we're looking for some additional time for the developer to coordinate with the affected residents. Uh, I can speak to uh, some recent progress that uh, parties did meet this evening. Um, here at Village Hall, and uh, staff's hope is that the additional two weeks w will allow for uh, some positive uh, movement in that direction, uh, while at the same time not unduly delaying the project and the process moving forward. So uh, it's staff's request that uh, the board consider uh, directing the att attorney for preparation of the associated ordinances, uh, but that we, we continue uh, to withhold action on the preliminary and final plan at this time. I know staff is prepared to address any questions regarding the uh, case and as well the developer uh, applicants representative is here uh, to address any questions the board may have. Well, I move that we uh, direct the village attorney to draft ordinance approving the amendment to the annexation agreement for the property known as Grand Park neighborhoods four, five, and six. Second. That motion's been made and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? I, I'm sorry, I have a couple of questions. I guess I just want to say um, thank you to Mr. Martin and client the hearts is for continuing to work with the one resident out there that expressed their concern and I believe you also addressed the other concern that I had brought up last time which was the homeowners association so it's my understanding that the existing townhomes will be rolled into the homeowners association for all the homes so it'll be one association so therefore there should be enough support and enough volume and enough people to be able to make it a viable HOA correct yes sir Thank you. And, and thank you very much, and I apologize for the terrible job I did explaining it at the last meeting. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Not. The motion was made and seconded to direct the village attorney to draft an ordinance 
approving the amendment to the annexation agreement for the property known as Grand Park, neighborhoods four, five, and six. Trustee Wojcicki? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Peck? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. We're seeking board consideration of a motion to direct the village attorney to draft an ordinance approving a major change to the planned development of the project known as Playa Vista to permit 321 dwelling units subject to the two stipulations noted in the staff report. So moved. Motion's been made and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? Hearing none, I'll proceed with the roll. Trustee Wojcicki? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Peck? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Next item on the agenda is Trolley Barn Facade Grant Phase 2 request. We're seeking board consideration of a motion to, appro to approve a facade grant for the second phase of improvements to the property at 24216 West Lockport Street, commonly known as the Trolley Barn, not to exceed $162,685. And thank you, and uh, Mayor, if I may uh, give just a brief overview of the project. Uh, and you uh, trustees may have noted that there's a, a correction in the requested dollar amount uh, from the staff report to the village board uh, uh, motion here. So I'll, I'll address that. Um, as the board is, I'm sure, well aware, uh, the trolley barn is uh, nearing completion or is undergoing uh, the first phase of a significant facade re uh, rehabilitation project uh, that's really um, had a dramatic impact on the appearance of the building and, and the uh, streetscape on the west side of our vintage downtown core. Um, the uh, petitioner has um, brought forward a request for a second phase of improvements that have um, been contemplated for some time and been in discussion. Um, so this is not a, a surprise to staff. We've been aware uh, that there are some additional work that needed to be addressed. Um, we wanted to kind of digest the first phase of the improvements. Uh, this has the additional benefit of allowing uh, the village's participation uh, should the board be inclined to approve a, a second phase uh, by allowing the, the village's reimbursement to be spread over multiple uh, fiscal years so it, it uh, le lessens or spreads out the, the impact from the village's standpoint. Um, staffs evaluated the request. Uh, there were a number of items that we feel are appropriate and fit the requirements for the sa facade improvement program. Uh, there were a couple items that uh, we felt were not uh, appropriate and not applicable and so those have been um, excluded from the information that's uh, presented to the board this evening. Um, in terms of the scope of work, uh, the requested um, project includes a replacement of the roof over the main trolley barn structure, uh, obviously a very sizable uh, cost, a sizable um, building, over 11,000 square feet. Um, so the, the cost and magnitude of that is, is quite significant. Uh, having said that, it is a vil visible element of the project. Uh, it can be seen from both uh, coming from the west and coming from the east. And uh, staff feels that it's an appropriate um, cost to include at a 50 percent uh, reimbursement uh, consistent with the village's facade improvement um, guidelines. Um, the second uh, item uh, that's requested is uh, reimbursement for an electrical service upgrade. Uh, the building was uh, very much outmoded uh, and not just in appearance but in terms of its utility service connections as well and um, at the village's direction a 1600 amp electrical service panel uh, is to be provided. Uh, this will provide a modern electrical service that would support uh, the types of uses uh, that we, our village staff, uh, anticipate and hope to see, uh, including potentially a, you know, a restaurant uh, that would require a higher um, electrical uh, demand. Uh, the electrical service upgrade uh, is a, a type of improvement that was anticipated when the village formed the TIF district back in 1998. Uh, that type of work, uh, elect electrical or utility service upgrade, is uh, specifically identified in the uh, TIF program redevelopment um, standards and, and so forth. Uh, it's somewhat silent in the facade improvement program, but it's uh, clearly spelled out and staff uh, is confident that it's, a, it's an eligible improvement. We recommend reimbursement at the 50% level consistent with the facade program guidelines. Uh, the third item that's included uh, is a request for uh, the cost of providing a public sidewalk and steps in the transition area between the village's um, a public sidewalk that was constructed in the 2007-2008 timeframe and the front facade, the front elevation of the building. The building actually encroaches into the public right away at, at a point and then uh, uh, is not parallel to the road right away as it transitions off. There's a triangular area that's on private property but uh, functions as a, a public walk. This area was to be included in the village's um, downtown refresh. 
uh, but due to uh, timing uh, reasons, uh, in cooperation with village staff, uh, the applicant completed this area of public sidewalk uh, in advance of the onset of the winter season last year so that we didn't have a uh, kind of a muddy, unexposed area uh, over the, the winter season. Um, for this reason, because it's essentially a public improvement, uh, staff is requesting reimbursement at the full 100% uh, cost incurred by the applicant. Uh, and then this is where the correction comes into place. Uh, the applicant is requesting approval of reimbursement for architectural services for the project. Uh, the facade program guidelines do allow for uh, reimbursement of architectural fees incurred. Um, the reimbursement is at, at a 50% rate and uh, due to my error, this was included in the uh, requested calculation at 100%. Uh, so that's the, the reason between uh, the motion and the recommendation of the staff report at $176,000 and change and then the motion has identified by the clerk this evening at 162,000 um, and change. Um, so the architectural fees at the 50% reimbursement rate would be consistent with the um, facade improvement program guidelines. Those fees are not to exceed 10% of the overall construction cost and at uh, 28,500, that's well below 10% uh, of the total cost, uh, private cost uh, being incurred by the applicant at this time. And then the final uh, item is a request for reimbursement of some general contractor costs associated with uh, field changes uh, and retrofits to uh, the uh, exterior of the building uh, as a result of some code uh, code issues and um, um, items experienced during construction. Uh, staff believes that those uh, improvements are consistent with the facade improvement program guidelines and would be uh, seeking recommendation for the 50% um, reimbursement. Um, in terms of the totals, uh, if, if the, all those uh, items are supported by the village board, uh, the request would be to approve a second phase facade grant in the amount of $162,685. Uh, in terms of the overall uh, cost and magnitude of the project, uh, staff recognizes uh, when considering the first phase uh, facade grant uh, and the potential for the board support for the current request, uh, it is a sizable, uh, sizable uh, facade grant reimbursement on the part of the village. Uh, but having said that, uh, this is also, uh, in staff's opinion, a, a very prominent uh, building and due to the age and condition of the building as well as the size of the, the building, uh, it's a, a project of um, perhaps the largest magnitude um, on, on par with and potentially exceeding uh, the restorations of the Masonic Block building and the original Opera House uh, uh, building reconstruction. Uh, so those were uh, two other similar projects with uh, significant uh, facade grant reimbursements. Um, staff believes that the uh, progress to date speaks for itself in terms of the dramatic improvement um, that the uh, project has made, uh, not just for the individual building, but for the whole uh, character of the west side of our vintage downtown. And we're excited to see uh, the project come to its completion and uh, hopeful for the, the tenants uh, who will occupy the future of the trolley barn. Um, having said that, staff would be seeking recommendation of approval uh, for, for the facade grant and the corrected amount noted. And uh, we do note that the uh, petitioner is here to address questions as well. And that concludes staff's overview. A couple of questions, John. And, uh, the refresh project, that was paid out of TIF funds? Yes, it was. Okay, so that makes sense to take it out of this one as well. Uh, just noting the, the report we got today, um, or the, from last week actually, TIF funds are one point. Uh, 1,482,000, so this doesn't exactly deplete our funds. As you say, this is a major improvement in Plainfield area, downtown area, and uh, I think it's money well spent to take advantage of uh, making it as nice as we can. So I would definitely support uh, this facade. We also pay only uh, when we get receipts, right? That's correct. It's uh, intended to be 100% reimbursement. Uh, at the end of the project, we do make provision for progress payment um, periodically, but not, you know, not weekly. Um, we require um, uh, waivers of lien and a sworn statement from the petitioner that the, uh, the costs incurred are uh, as, as stated. Uh, we're protecting our interest and their interest as well. So excellent. Great program. I agree with what uh, Trustee Lamont said. Um, you covered in your explanation most of my questions that I had, so excellent presentation, uh, Jonathan. Um, in regards to the um, architectural service fees, 
in the general contractor costs, we will obtain receipts, and those will all be within the scope of the facade, correct? There won't be anything that has to do with the inside of the building involved in those fees, correct? That's correct. The, the requirement is for uh, those line items to be separated out and demonstrated. And uh, the petitioner had the foresight uh, and, and office staff to uh, coordinate with us uh, so that as the contracts were uh, structured and organized, it, it makes for a, a fairly straightforward uh, evaluation. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to, to pull out a particular scope of item, electrical, for example, or, or something that might be both interior and exterior, but uh, the, the contracts were identified at the outset to, to have the facade work uh, as a separate line item, so it really makes it easy to review. That addressed two of my questions. The, the third one I had, I'm going to split hairs here. The lawyers may appreciate this that are in the room this evening. Um, Jonathan, you had said specifically that the electrical service upgrade is allowed within the TIF, but not necessarily part of our facade grant program and the policy the board adopted, correct? That's correct. It's, um, I believe, somewhat silent in the, in the facade program. It doesn't speak to it 100%. Uh, I can respond, and, and uh, uh, I, I certainly appreciate it. I think I'm anticipa anticipating your question. Perhaps I should let you ask it, but um, in my opinion, the facade program is a vehicle, a mechanism for addressing the cost of these improvements, uh, and is it, could it be included in the facade or reimbursed uh, in another manner? Um, it, it potentially, we could do a redevelopment agreement just to cover this electrical service fee, but... Uh, staff's opinion this is a fairly transparent approach uh, we're confident it meets the um, the requirements of the the TIF uh, redevelopment project overall um, so I don't know if that addresses your question but I certainly acknowledge the it definitely does I'm gonna ask the board to respond but I want to bring up something that um, trustee O'Rourke had mentioned in a previous um, facade grant uh, application um, that came in front of us uh, another applicant had some things that were out of the ordinary I think it was fencing and outhouses um, and we decided to pull that off the, uh, the approval and we didn't move forward with that portion and approved a reduced facade grant. So I'm curious what the rest of the board's thoughts are on the electrical service upgrade portion that is not addressed in our facade grant policy, but it is allowed legally then within um, by using TIF funds. So I guess that's my question for the rest of the board. I, my feeling on that is, and I, and I was concerned about that line item as well as, as well as a couple others, but um, I guess I'm going to defer to staff's expertise on that and go forward with probably with their recommendation, uh, knowing that they were a little bit more intricate in knowing the details of the TIF. And all I would ask is that if that is consistent with what we've done and what we will continue to do if other applicants come forward. So we're fair to everybody. That's all I would say on that. I agree with Trustee O'Rourke. If, if we should either change the policy to allow it or in the future not. I mean, I like, I'm with him, and I'm going to rely on your expertise on this matter, but I think it needs to be cleaned up for the future for any future requests. Along those lines, though, one of the concerns that I had was, and maybe it's, again, splitting hairs, but it seems like everything we're doing is 50 percent, yet the public sidewalks and steps is at 100. So I don't know if the board would consider or would want to consider maybe 50 percent of reimbursement for that to keep it consistent with what our reimbursements are on the other items. Again, the uh, point that uh, that we took with regard to the uh, concrete work is that uh, that was work that we had anticipated on spending entirely uh, as we were doing our uh, refresh of the downtown area. We specifically held off on doing it because of the work that was being done at this property. They were at a point in time where they could do the work we had, and we actually ordered them to do the work on our behalf. Uh, they were happy to do that. So it was an expense that we had anticipated on paying 100% of our own. Um, they were kind enough to do the work for us. So we, that's that's how we're seeing that. And we are very specific that it had to match the uh, the um, the score marks had to match with what we had out there. They also matched the uh, uh, color of the pavement and the like. So they responded uh, quite well to to our request to uh, have that work done. And in your report, um, you referred to a precedent just for the sake of discussion so people know that items here are really <coughs> things that we've done before for facade grants, that there's precedence for this, for example, the roof. Correct. Because obviously the roof, when you first, at first glance, you see the roof, you think, okay, is this really the facade to, to replace the whole roof or whatever. So do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Um, sure. So when, uh, you know, when the facade is, is um, visible, 
and it's uh, excuse me when the roof is is visible and and when its condition uh, contributes to uh, the perception of the, the appearance of the uh, facade uh, it's a case where staff would support uh, inclusion of the roof and the scope of work of a facade project um, it's a kind of a dramatic example but the, the uh, easy example to point to is the Andreessen building or the courtyard building where the roof is really a kind of an architectural uh, feature of the of the building overall um, but again um, just due to the uh, size of the building, the magnitude of the, of the project, and the, um, uh, the visibility, both from the east and from the west, uh, staff felt it was appropriate to include in the, in the, in the project. And there, you know, there has been past precedent. Um, clearly, the Masonic Block building, um, again, architect architectural elements, some uh, unique features there, but some uh, roof expenses were included in that facade uh, project as well. So there have been um, examples. Mm. If it's the... Uh, I guess I can, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right, John. No, I got it. Thanks. My my other comment, I guess, is if you look at it overall, I mean, it, it's a lot of money. I mean, I think the, the village is being generous, but I think probably for the right reasons. I think you're doing a great job on your building, so thank you very much for that. I think it's going to add a good, what some people describe as an anchor to, you know, the downtown area. So I just hope that, you know, one of your, or your first tenant is a is a very good tenant. That's <laughs> And, I, and I'm, I'm speculating, uh, or I'm assuming that I'm, this is a, one of the main reasons I think the TIF was created, correct? I mean, in order to regenerate the downtown and, and buy it and then do those sorts of things, correct? Right. There were a number of different I items that were identified in the uh, creation of the t downtown TIF district, uh, doing facade improvements to, to encourage uh, private investments uh, uh, was... Uh, one of the original, actually, uh, primary uh, focuses when they created the TIF district. Yes. On to Trustee Wojowski's comment, I would like to see a uh, tax amendment brought forward, and, you know, it's nothing urgent, but in the near future to our um, policy that would allow um, the electrical service upgrade or and have the board add that and actually vote on that so that way we don't have other applicants say, well, you gave it to them, but it's not in the policy. It, it, I think it just eliminates confusion, miscommunication. Um, I think it'd be in the, you know, best practice to actually have that added in the future if we could bring that forward someday. I, uh, my comment, I would agree with that, and I would just ask maybe if you're going to do that to maybe expand a little bit because I, I pulled just a facade improvement program description. I mean, if that's the whole description, it, it doesn't get into a lot of the details. It really doesn't. It's the you know, as far as the roof replacement, and we just described the electrical that, you know, those other items as well. So just a thought if you're going to get into that. We wrote the original program, if you will, but we've had, I don't know, what, 15 different or more facade grants. So we have a lot of precedents that uh, we can work off of, and I think they make a pretty good base for what's acceptable and what's not. The board has voted on each and every one of them, and, uh, you know, we can elaborate on it, but on the other hand, we have a system in place that works. Um, let's continue using it for good things. I think this is a building that's an excellent example of it. Uh, I think it's uh, going to be a real asset, and it's been an eyesore, as a lot of people know, for a long time. I'm delighted to see it actually become a functional building, and I um, appreciate all the efforts gone into it. Uh, it's been a lot of work and effort, so. I think if we can support and nurture it, uh, it's probably in our best interest. This is a history. I think that building <coughs> has only been used for baseball cards at one time. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, uh, when Raylock closed and moved out of that building, I want to say it was in the 80s, uh, that building was closed and has sat stagnant for that many years. So uh, th I think this is a wonderful uh, business that's going into there, and I, I'm real appreciative because it really does anchor the uh, west end of the of uh, Lockport Street. Are there any other comments or questions? If not, we'd be seeking a motion to approve a facade grant for the second phase of improvements to the property at 242 16 West Lockport Street, commonly known as the Trolley Barn, not to exceed $162,685. So moved. Second. That motion's been made and seconded. Trustee Wachowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Peck? Yes. 
Thank you. That motion carries. Thank you very much. Next item, next item on the agenda is Plainfield Meyer Plaza 3, Lot 3. We're seeking board consideration of a motion to adopt ordinance number 3252, approving a special use for a drive through. So moved. Motion's been made and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? Hearing none, I'll proceed with the roll. Trustee Wajowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Peck? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Next item on the agenda is 127th Street, Plainfield, LLC. We're seeking board consideration of a motion to adopt ordinance number 3253, granting approval of a special use permit for the Parkland Preparatory Academy at 27040 West 127th Street for up to 60 students. So moved. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? Hearing none, I'll proceed with the roll. Trustee Wajowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Trustee Peck? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Next item on the agenda is Vequity LLC target out lot. We're seeking board consideration of a motion to adopt ordinance number 3254, granting approval of a special use to permit drive through operations on <coughs> lot one of the Vequity subdivision. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? I just reconfirm this is two drive throughs on that particular property, right? That's correct. The option for two. Okay, so, okay, that's fine. Are there any other comments or questions? Not the motion was made and seconded to adopt ordinance number 3254. Trustee Wajowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Peck? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Administrator's report? No report. Management services report? No report. Engineer's report? No report. Planning department report? Uh, thank you. I have two items this evening. Uh, the first is uh, just the annual review and approval of the Village of Plainfield zoning map. Uh, state statute requires the Village Board to uh, approve, or it does not require to approve, but uh, to consider a uh, zoning map each year. Uh, so staff has worked to update the zoning map. Uh, the updates reflect only uh, action taken by the Village Board in the past uh, year. So uh, properties that have annexed into the Village, the map has been expanded to uh, expand the Village's corporate boundaries. Uh, the handful of zone changes that we've had throughout the year this is not a vehicle or a mechanism for any property owner or uh, for village uh, staff uh, to rezone uh, any property um, so uh, it's something that we work uh, co cooperatively with uh, the village's uh, gis consultant um, on staff uh, uh, to maintain throughout the year and this is just an annual publishing of the uh, uh, zoning map um, it's something we've done consistently for the past number of years and staff would be seeking uh, uh, village uh, approval I move that we approve the uh, 2016 zoning map update. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Are there any comments or questions? Now I'll proceed with the roll. Trustee Wajowski? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Peck? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. And the second item I have is uh, it's kind of an annual rite of spring. Some people think spring is coming when you can see the tulips uh, popping up through the, the mulch in your yard. But uh, really, you know, spring is coming when the mulch is appearing at the gas stations in town uh, for sale. As the village board would recall, uh, this type of activity requires uh, uh, <coughs> approval as a temporary outdoor use. Uh, it's regulated by the zoning code and the village board has the authority to um, uh, allow for temporary outdoor uses. Uh, what we ask is that the petitioners um, identify uh, where those uh, uh, outdoor sales activities would occur so that we can uh, make sure it doesn't occupy required parking, uh, that it does, doesn't have an impact on uh, ingress and egress and that sort of thing. Uh, so we did re receive uh, the one enclosed request from Bucky's or Mobile on a, um, Route 59 just north of 100, uh, Route 126. Um, this is a uh, user who um, uh, proceeded to uh, initiate sales without uh, prior village approval uh, several years back and uh, we indicated what process was necessary and they have since come in the last several years very diligently unsolicited uh, with their uh, request in advance uh, of course there are a number of uh, locations in the village uh, that may or may not be in compliance and staff is continuing to uh, work uh, to either have those items removed or to have the appropriate requests brought forth uh, so we would anticipate uh, perhaps at the next meeting We'll have a handful of other um, requests. 
Uh, specific to what's before the board this evening, um, the uh, request is consistent with past years. We don't believe there have been any issues with parking. Uh, uh, Appearance-wise, it's, it's in a relatively low, um, um, low visibility area, and we're comfortable with their request. Uh, their request is to have the temporary outdoor sales from uh, April 1st through October 15th, or if they were to sell out of their uh, inventory uh, before that time. So staff reports the re uh, supports the request. I move that we approve the temporary use request for outdoor mulch sales at uh, Bucky's Mobile. Second. Uh, some comments, though. At the, it's not strictly the ingress or the ingress, outgress, or egress. Uh, we were trying to make sure the appearance. You alluded to the appearance, but the board, in going after Bucky's originally for not paying attention, they moved it to the north side where it's highly vi not visible, which is great. Uh, if other people are willing to do that, what we're trying to do is avoid piles of mulch right along uh, main roads. And Bucky's understood that and they followed through and definitely I support them for this. But others, if they don't, I would hope that we uh, take a hard line and say either conform to what we expect or stop doing it. Uh, but this one I support. They've done a good job. I agree. And this particular um, applicant, you know, in the past I've seen them um, go to good measure to make sure that everything is kept clean and organized. Uh, in addition, uh, just for other um, businesses that are out there, um, it's important, at least in my opinion, when we do um, grant these, uh, these special uses um, to allow this, to have line of sight available from the street to the front of their shop, gas station, what have you, in my opinion, is a life safety issue for law enforcement so they can see what's going on inside the gas station, in the lot of the gas station, if somebody is sick or needs help or if something bad is happening, a resident may see it and be able to notify authorities or the police can as well also address the issue. So I think, you know, in addition to housekeeping and having it also look aesthetically pleasing, it's also a safety issue, and I'm glad that we're doing it the way we are. I will support this. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Not the, the motion was made and seconded to approve temporary outdoor sales of mulch <coughs> for Bucky's at 14808 South Route 59 from April 1st to October 15th. Trustee Wojcicki? Yes. Trustee Benucci? Yes. Trustee Lamb? Yes. Trustee O'Rourke? Yes. Trustee Peck? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries. Building department report? No report. Public works report? No report. Police department report? Thank you. I have two items on the agenda. Uh, the first one is an item uh, that was previously approved by the board back in February. Uh, however, due to a typographical error that I failed to catch uh, before that board meeting, um, the um, price for the DARE t-shirts that I'm coming forward with uh, was approved at a, a cost less than what they actually cost. Um, back in February, we had I had come forward with a cost for 1,200 and uh, sorry 1,248 T-shirts from Boomer Tees uh, in the amount of $5,177, and the cost was actually $6,177. So I am coming to the board back to the board to seek approval on the higher amount of $6,177, and I would uh, just uh, like to remind the board that these monies do not actually come out of the budget. They're actually monies that are actually raised by the kids uh, for the fundraising for the D.A.R.E. program. And then obviously the uh, monies would be returned right back to the kids in the form of the T-shirts. So I would be seeking board's approval uh, to purchase 1,248 T-shirts from Boomer Tees in the total amount of $6,177.60. I move that we approve the purchase of T-shirts uh, from Boomer Tees for the amount of six thousand one hundred seventy-seven dollars and fifty cents, sixty cents. Second. That motion's been made and seconded. Trustee Wojcicki. Yes. Trustee Benucci. Yes. Trustee Lamb. Yes. Trustee O'Rourke. Yes. Trustee Peck. Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. Thank you. And the only other item I have is the operations report for the police department for February. If anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Attorney's report. Uh, no report this evening. Thank you. Reminders. March 28th, we're at our next committee of the whole. Our next board meeting will be April the 4th, and the Planning Commission meets on April the 4th. Taking a motion to adjourn. Second. 
motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. That motion carries.